Hello friends, happy Valentine's Day. I'm Kayla and I'm here to read some romance. I know this is not the content for everybody, but last year I did a romance experiment video. I ended up reading like 30 romance books and I did enjoy some. Now that it's 2023, I've read some more romance books and haven't loved them. But so I thought the week like leading up to Valentine's Day, I would revisit all of the authors that I did enjoy in the romance series. As one of my reading goals for the year was to not commit to a book until I'm like 25 pages in, I am not officially committing to finishing all of these, but I will begin all of them and let you know my first impressions. So we've got Two Wrongs Make a Right by Chloe Lise, who's an author that I already trust with the things that she's going to talk about, and this has to do with fake dating, which is a favorite of mine. We've got Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail by Ashley Herring Blake, which is the sequel or spin-off following similar characters but not the same main characters in Delilah Green Doesn't Care. And we again have a spin-off companion sequel whatever to Sweet Hand by Angie Peltier. This one is called Don't Go Baking My Heart and I've already forgotten who we're following. It's one of the main characters sisters or brothers or both. Then my favorite romance of the year, Honey and Spice by Bolu Babalola. She has a short story collection all about love in mythology. I feel good about those four. The outlier here in a lot of ways is unfairly cute. No, highly suspicious and unfairly cute. I didn't like Talia Hibbert, or I'm sure she's fine as a person, but I didn't like the book that I read from her. However, I wanna give it another go, and it's YA, which makes this questionable, but I'm thinking YA from Talia Hibbert may be the answer to the things that I didn't like about Get a Life Chloe Brown. I'm not sure what I'm gonna get up to this week vlogging wise. Actually tonight I am going to a movie with my husband. He's gonna be on call the actual like weekend and then into the week of Valentine's Day. So we can't really go anywhere. So tonight we're gonna go see The Cabin at the End of the World slash Knock at the Cabin. Not the most romantic movie, but I am watching a romantic movie with my channel members on the weekend. So I'll be reading, I'll be movieing, who knows what else I'll get up to. You'll find out in a second. I'm going to read the first chapter of each of these, but I might put the film review in first. It is date night. Look who I've got with me. That guy. We're going to see. He doesn't no even know. Knocking in on the cabin. Yes. Um, it's the adaptation of The Cabin at the End of the World, which is one of my favorite books. I was gonna, I was considering rereading it before seeing the movie, but I've heard that it's quite different anyway, so I'm, I don't want to be sitting there comparing the differences. It is done by M. Night Shyamalan, <laughs> Rob's yawning. So I feel like he's known for weird twist kind of endings. Um, neither of us have watched the trailer. He knows nothing. I know close to nothing. I know Batista's in it, that's it. Mm -hmm. With glasses, and it makes me feel weird about myself. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure it's a little similar to the book, so I know like a little bit. Maybe like character names, possibly? I don't even remember them except for the little girl. He doesn't even know there's a little girl. There's a little girl? Literally knows nothing. I, I brought him in. Um, I know there's actors who got paid to act. Indeed. We just went to Liam's hockey game. It was fantastic. They did lose, but he got a pretty incredible goal for being defense. So. We'll come back to you with our official movie review when we're done. What's your rating out of five? It's cold. Out of five, I'd give it a three. Me too. Because I think acting wise, really good. Character is really good. There wasn't anyone I didn't like. It just felt very linear to me. There's just not enough twists. I think it was worth the watch, but I would rather watch almost anything than watch it again. And I wouldn't recommend people pay for it if they have another option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, not a theater movie. <laughs> not There's a no need for a theater. I went in thinking it was going to be like the black box, if that's what it was called, where it was aliens judging humans. It's the type of movie I wouldn't find myself recommending to anyone unless I know their movie taste really well. Yeah. Hello, me again. This morning I got my hair touched up and I had this whole plan for how my day was gonna go. I was gonna go to Indigo because the Indigo website crashed last night and I was placing an order like right at midnight and the, all the sign-in stopped working. My cart said it was empty. I wanted to place an order for like click and collect today and the whole website crashed. And so I went in person and then when I got there, there was a sign on the door that said their entire system was down and they were only taking cash. 
I didn't have any. So then I left and I went to Bed Bath & Beyond because my blender just broke. I'm telling you, the vibes today were weird. Um, I went to go buy a new blender and the second I pulled into the Bed Bath & Beyond parking lot, Liam texted me to pick him up from school early because he wasn't feeling well. So my plans for my solo day out with no responsibility, taking myself out for lunch, buying shit, it just got turned upside down. But I just think that the universe wanted me home. It didn't want me out in the world anymore. I was getting all sorts of bad vibes. So we're home. I'm reading Love and Color. I decided to start with this because it's short stories. So I read one before my appointment. I read one yesterday and now I'm going to keep reading. So these are mythical tales from all around the world. And I thought that each story would have like the origin story or just a, not the whole story but an explanation of like where the story came from the origin the year it was first seen and whatever because I'm sure some of these love stories are going to be unfamiliar to me but I have discovered that each of the titles is like the woman from history from these tales so as long as you know who they are you can figure it out or you can just google and get the origin story yourself. Um, I was surprised. I wasn't surprised. I was delighted to see that one in here because 1001 Nights is a favorite of mine and it's definitely a completely different story. It's not a retelling. It's like taking the characters, putting them in modern day or putting them in different circumstances. And I really like that one. The first one was Ocean, which I'm not familiar with, but then I checked the back and there is a page that says sources of inspiration right here. So you can see exactly what I was looking for. So that one was a Yoruba myth and religion from Nigeria. Next up is gonna be Nefertiti. And then I also saw there are new tales as well. I do have a package we could open together. Do you wanna do that? You know what I was also thinking about buying today was a stand mixer because I've never had one. And I thought I should make some Valentine's treats and do some other Valentine's y things this week and in this video. Oh, there's two things from Book Depository. I thought it was just one and one was from Indigo. So I don't know what these are. I ordered a whole bunch of things like a month ago. But anyway, if I get around to buying a stand mixer, I want to make this Valentine's y loaf I saw on TikTok. But we'll see. Okay, Where I End by Sophie White. This was selected for me um, by a friend recommendation on Instagram for the 12 books recommended by 12 friends. I also recently got this one in the mail, the Iliac Crest. It was also for the same thing. You would have seen me talk about those in my TBR video. This should be Redder Days, but it seems really small, so maybe it's not. Oh, it is. Okay, it's just a smaller thinner book than I thought. So this you would have seen me pull out of my member's TBR jar, which, oh my gosh, I'm wearing purple. Another thing I was gonna do today was go buy some purple paper so I could print out the member suggestions for this month. I don't have to pull that until March 1st. If you watch the video, you already know that I pulled two things from there, one for January, one for February. And I said I was gonna read Redder Days in January and then realized I could only get it from Book Depository. So I bumped up Gideon the Ninth instead. And now this is set for February. So I will be reading this either right after or in the midst of these Valentine's romance reads, but not as part of this video. Okay, I thought since this is my romance Valentine's vlog, you can pick my next read. Okay. Because I'm ready for a full length novel. A full length novel. Tonight. Okay, I'm going to read you the first line of each one. Let me close my eyes so I can picture this. Okay. Book number one. It's the first day of school and I'm already being forced to socialize. What do you rate that out of 10 as a first line? A seven. Okay. Look at number two. Devin King didn't like anything that derailed his daily plans. I got three. Book number three. Astrid Parker looked perfect. That's it? Book number four. A word to the wise, don't have your fortune read unless you're prepared to be deeply disturbed. Do any of these look familiar? This one does. You bought me these two for Christmas. Oh, I choose Astrid Parker doesn't fall. Fail. Fail. That is not the one I expected. I love you. So Rob and I went our separate ways. I read half of this. He watched my latest video 
and now we're headed to bed. I can't stop thinking about the Indigo crash because they have now posted on all their social media that it was a security breach. And I keep thinking about how for the past week, every time I clicked on an upcoming title to pre-order it, things that haven't come out yet, it took me to an error page. And I just kind of brushed it off and was like, whatever. But I keep thinking like, maybe that was an indicator that their site was already in the process of being hacked. And maybe if I had alerted someone that those error messages were coming, like I could have saved Indigo. Anyway, back to this. I like these two women more than I like as characters, not relationship wise. Um, but I like them more than the two characters, Claire and Delilah from the first book in this series. Is it perhaps because Astrid is a little bit relatable? She's a bit of a control freak. She just went to a bar and ordered an old fashioned. So I feel represented. Though I will say in the first, literally on the first page, it describes Astrid and says that she has hair below her shoulders and on the cover, it's not true. And I'm upset. Anyway, something I loved about that first book and I said before is that I love how you always know how these women look, what they're wearing, how their hair is styled, and the same is true for this one, which I appreciate. And then it has to do with renovating this inn and they're filming little segments for this TV show on HGTV. And there is just enough renovation discussion and describing like the floors and the paint color and the wallpaper. And that's exactly what I want. So far, it feels less um, romance and sex centric compared to the first book, which totally makes sense because of these characters' backgrounds. She has just gotten out of a relationship and she also has just recently gotten out of a relationship, both in very different ways, but they are recovering. Astrid has also only ever been with men, so Jordan is sensitive to being the first woman that Astrid has been interested in. And she just said like, I don't want to be your first kiss with a woman right now because you want to kiss a woman. I want to be your first kiss because you want to kiss me. And that really got me. So I'm now paused at that point and I'm excited to pick this back up tomorrow. Hello, hello. Those are my taxes. That's a whole container of receipts just sitting on the floor. Let's cover that up. I'm trying to wear my most romantic themed clothing for this vlog, even though I'm literally not leaving the house today. It's snowing. I have two questions. One, why is it snowing in February? And while we're talking about February, why if Valentine's Day is an invented made up thing, why is it ever on a weekday? Like there are other holidays that are like always on a Sunday or always on a Thursday. Why does it have to be the 14th of February? It could just be the second Friday or Saturday of February every year. There are never any holidays on Saturdays. Anyway, I'm just saying, if it's a Monday to Thursday past 5 p.m., I'm not leaving the house unless it's to attend something Liam has to do. Because I'm old and like maybe I should use that as an excuse to go out and have a date night, like that's the point. But I would literally rather be lying in my bed, listening to an audiobook and doing my digital puzzle. <laughs> it's not like I'm waiting to be like taken out. I don't want to be taken out. I'm almost done with the book and I have read a couple more stories in the Bolu Babalola one, but I'll talk to you more about that when I'm like at the halfway point and I can give you a good chunk of them at a time. My thoughts on this is, having a fine time. I think it's nice, I think it's sweet. I think Ashley Herring Blake knows exactly how much of real life to put into her stories and other couples. We definitely got a little look into Delilah and Claire, but not too much. I just feel like she's a really skilled author. The conflict between these two is like, should they even be in a relationship? And when should they tell other people that they're in a relationship? Because something so fun about this is that they're filming this show and there's a producer or a host of the show who sees their banter because um, she is like renovating or designing the renovation and she is the handy woman but also it's her family's in like they own it so she feels a lot of nostalgia for it and wants to keep the character of it and Astrid is making everything really modern which is what she was hired to do so it's got kind of this hate to love dynamic because they definitely butt heads but the host sees that and she's like let's lean into that for the show but now that they're involved off screen they kind of have to keep up their witty banter on screen and act like they're battling more than they actually are and so it's like these 
subtle little like I'm just kidding I didn't actually mean to say that mean thing I just said we also just got a cover reveal for the third book which I will be picking up and is my favorite cover for reasons that we don't need to get into it's it's beautiful though I would say this character she is in here I'm not super interested in her enough to want to read a whole book about her but I'm sure I will anyway for reasons. All right, don't mind the sound of my stove, but today here's what I did. I made myself a cute little yogurt bowl. I watched the challenge finale episode two of three. Um, I finished my book and then I realized I had to call my doctor um, and they had great hold music. Then I realized how ugly my phone was, so I'm finally switching to my new one today and transferring everything over. I'm officially doing it tonight. I also went to Starbucks and got them to make me some espresso and I got a little coffee and here we are. Now I'm making ravioli and Caesar salad for dinner. Rob is on his way home. Liam's screaming at his friends on his video game. All is right with the world. I didn't know the challenge finale was gonna be three episodes because it's like a hundred hour final challenge. Um, but Devin and Tori have been my favorite cast members since their very first season. So the fact that they're partners and they're in the final together, I'm just, I have high hopes for the final episode next week. So like I said, finished this. I liked it slightly more than Delilah Green, which I gave a four. So I think I would give this a 4.25. That sounds a little high, but I really have no complaints. It's just not like a new all time favorite romance, though there's not very many in that category anyway. I went to the Goodreads to see, cause I just like to compare my rating to other people's because I don't really know what people have thought about this one and Goodreads is down. So there's some kind of conspiracy with all of my favorite bookish apps not being available this week. I think what's fun about Ashley Herring Blake and this series is she writes relatable situations, relatable characters. You will find one woman in this series that you connect with, I'm sure. And also I think she leans into the romance tropes and calls them out herself. Like, I feel like in Delilah Green, there was a specific part where she was like, I'm grumpy and you're the sunshine. And in this one, there was a moment at the end, naturally, where she was like, this is my big grand gesture. And like, that's such a romance trope. I think Astrid is a hard character to get on board with in the first book, but you really come to understand why she is the way that she is. And it's a lot to do with her mother and her needing to live up to certain expectations and just have a certain structured life for herself. And so she's kind of in this chaos because she's not with her partner she was with for so long. She's questioning her identity. She's questioning what she wants to do for work. And both of the women kind of figure out together and directly through each other what they want their careers to be and they help each other in that way and that's really cool. I've read more stories in the short story collection. I um, listened to it while I was doing this Valentine's Eve puzzle. And then what else I did today is I edited for five straight hours, but that would be boring to film or to talk about. But that's often what a good portion of my day is spent doing. And then I also did some science-y flashcards with Liam um, and having not done, taken a science class, in, I don't know, 14, 15 years, I was not prepared for electrons and protons and neurons. And I didn't know the answer to some of the science-y questions, but it's fun having kids. So it's like going back to school all over again. It's, I've always wanted to do that for sure. I'm currently reading, don't go baking my heart. So I thought it'd be the perfect day to bake a cake. I don't know how to bake a cake, but that's what TikTok is for. The first thing I'm gonna do involves mixing things in this bowl. I also have to separate six eggs later. I don't know how to do that. Rob's gonna be home any minute now though and be like, what on earth are you doing? I do know I need red food coloring. And one of the boxes I bought had pink on it, but didn't actually have pink food coloring inside, which is disappointing. So that's like flour, sugar, vegetable oil, egg food coloring. I'm supposed to be able to pipe this to make little hearts. Well, I put in a piping bag, the consistency is like, glue but she makes these little hearts all over it i was gonna try to talk to you about the book while i did this and now i'm realizing i am incapable oh no oh nope oh hmm interesting how did i mess up the very first thing take two flour granulated sugar does she maybe mean powdered sugar i don't understand how she's getting at this texture i broke up my egg first and put the red food coloring in here and it's going to turn out perfect. Why? What's happening? 
Rob was just on an on-call job and then he came home and then he immediately got called to another on-call job. And he's supposed to take me to a hockey game while I have my movie night. Let's try the hearts again. Okay, no. I'm sorry, this sticky stuff cannot be the same thing that woman was using. <laughs> Should I tell you about my book? Um, so in the original Sweet Hand, we have a woman named Charisse and she runs a bakery and she's a wonderful baker and she has this assistant employee named Reba. And Devin, the other guy, is part of like an architecture um, business. He wants to rise up in the company and become a partner or whatever. And to do that, he needs to up his like social game at the company. So people talk to him, hang out with him, get to know him better and seem like a real part of the team because right now he doesn't really involve himself in any of the team building after our activities. And so something the company decides to do is a baking competition and it's like a live baking competition. So they're all doing it at the same time. And he wants to be involved in it and wants to hire Charisse, but she is busy. So the next best thing is Reba. Now the only problem with that is Reba is a little bit wild. And my only problem isn't separating them, but like even getting them in the type of halves that are conducive to popping them back and forth but I think I did it and that's six. Devin is very buttoned up and professional and takes this very seriously, but she is trying to like flirt with him the entire time and has a little bit of a bet going that she can get him to sleep with her or to want to sleep with her. She's also just like interested in him in general and thinks that he could reciprocate and just needs to like get him out of his shell. I put the hearts in the hearts in the freezer and now we're doing milk oil, vanilla extract, and then I'm gonna do red and yellow food coloring in hopes that that makes it pinker than just red would be. Now let's watch the magic. Oh, I'm also supposed to put in strawberry extract, which I found at Michael's. This is a strawberry cake, if I didn't establish that. And they've already had two scenes in the book where they've been baking together. One of them was a cupcake I think the other one was a cupcake and now they're making cookies. I think I just need that much flour. Should I mix the flour and the baking powder together? How I'm feeling about the book so far. I like that it's a very different dynamic than the first book, but I feel like I am missing the dynamic a little bit. I think Devin is a little too uptight for me to enjoy right now. I'm halfway through and Reba is a little too much for me as well. It's definitely a slower burn than the first one as well, but it's been fun to read. Okay, now onto the egg whites. Um, I went out and bought that blender I was telling you about. Haven't used it yet, but very excited to have it. And that's when I found out you all have been spending three, $400 on KitchenAid stand mixers. I didn't know that. I was not prepared for that. So I got myself a hand mixer because I've never owned one. And I guess I just put it in the bowl and then slowly add sugar. I'm frightened. <laughs> oh, on high, it said on high. I've been at it for 15 minutes. Um, it's just bubbles. I'm supposed to use a glass bowl, I guess, which I don't have. And I'm not supposed to let any yolk get into the whites. And there was a teeny tiny bit. And then the internet told me if I get any yolk at all in it, it's compromised. So I've been compromised. And I don't even have six more eggs because I had to do the heart batter twice. Okay, I did not give up. Does this look like stiff peaks to you? I don't know, but I did it with five eggs because that's all I had. And I did it in glass because apparently that was better and no yolk. And now I have to fold it into here. And I know I'm supposed to be really careful to not break anything, but uh, I'm scared. <laughs> I don't even know if this batter is right because it has the same texture as the like super red batter. And I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. It's just a ball of <laughs> glue. This is pretty cool though. I just don't know how to mix it without losing the integrity of the meringue. Also, it's supposed to be pretty and pink. Now this lumpy mixture gets poured onto the hearts and then baked for a certain amount of time. How are you burnt and undercooked at the same time? 
You made lava. <laughs> I'm scared of it. It smells good. It smells like eggs. It smells like so many eggs. Why won't I let go? <laughs> Would you like to eat a piece? Is oh, it... now it's gooey. Just tastes like eggs. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It smells like an omelet. Is it sweet? Nope. <laughs> Not even a bit. Oh my god. Well, what do I want to say? <laughs> well, I don't actually think this is edible because part of it's gooey. Are you gonna cry? Why does it taste like that? <laughs> I'm not swallowing it. Well, I'm really glad I didn't buy a KitchenAid just for that. I'm never baking again. And just like that, it's movie night. I have other treats that I can have with my movie. I got some caramel popcorn that'll be good. And I'm watching The Lost City with my channel members. Here's my little setup. Got the webcam, got the movie. Oh, actually Rob brought me home coffee. There's a giant hole in my coffee. <laughs> what the heck? Where do you think that plastic piece is though? Is it in my drink? I have to strain my drink. The movie starts in two minutes. I'm filling it back up with ice. Everything's good. I think I'm gonna finish this right after the movie. Um, the only thing I tabbed so far was Rebo's life motto that I liked that said, take me as I am or leave me where you found me. And though I probably relate more to Devin as like a type A, I do feel like Reba is a fun character to follow. She's very much herself and wants him to also feel like he can be himself. I wonder if she's gonna learn anything from him or if she, you know, needs to learn anything, who knows? Hey babes, it's me. I'm having a day. I once dug a hole so deep at the beach, I found a leech and it attached to my hand. It was so scary. Oh, oh my God, can you believe after 10 movie nights together we finally found a five out of five for me oh my god i loved it ah i'm gonna watch it again with rob hello happy super bowl sunday to all who celebrate today i'm taking bookmark pictures i'm using yesterday's valentine's Day sweater as my backdrop i have some beautiful charms and if you're thinking hey you said you were only doing festive attire this week that's not very festive it is. I was just not in the mood to vlog last night, but I did finish this and now I'm into the Chloe Lise one, which have interestingly similar main love interests. So I finished Love and Color. I'm going to use this for my pictures. I'm giving it a 4.5. My favorite ones were about Psyche. Um, she kind of worked in this magazine office company. So it was like a Greek story, but modernized because she was in love with a coworker. They were getting blackmailed by their boss. It was a really interesting story. Another one I loved is Zinu. I was listening to the audiobook for some of these. And for the last one, her mom, um, Bolu Babalola's mom narrated it with her. And it was a really special story that was important to them. And that was really sweet though. It wasn't my favorite. I think the first two and the last one I would give fours or high threes and the rest were all fives. Um, my absolute favorite one was Thisbe and it took place in like this college dorm and her um, dorm neighbor played music really loudly and was kind of a player. They had this connection with music and I loved it so much. And then the one right after it, which was a new tale, Tiara. It had famous characters and took place at this award show and I really loved it. The dynamic between these couples is just so great and her centering women in all of these stories. And then I think it was Orin, which was the next one. It had just this natural chemistry between these two characters. And I feel like if you read this short story collection from this author, it would have been so 
satisfying to then get a full length novel with honey and spice like if I had read this in a different order it would have been so fun because my favorite things from all the stories and all of the banter and stuff you got to see it all in honey and spice and for like a longer period of time and it was so it was great on the flip side don't go baking my heart I think I'm giving a four. I feel like I can easily recommend it because it stays in line with all of the tropes you expect. It doesn't do anything too crazy. I feel like we can really trust this author with the stories that she's telling. The miscommunication doesn't go too far. The betrayal never goes too far with the two books that I've read. And at the end of it, it said, um, look forward to more Island Bites stories. So we're going to see more of the characters, which I love because the friend group is great. And the thing about this competition is she's like training him, but she can't actually help him at the competition itself at his office. The dynamic between them is very much like she is interested right away. He's very hesitant and she has to kind of convince him throughout the entire book that she is good enough for him she questions her own worth even though outwardly she's very much like a confident powerful woman but internally she questions like her education her intelligence her worthiness of being with this man who has a more serious kind of job and I wouldn't say that's my favorite dynamic to read though they both did as expected bring something out in each other that the other one needed as with any competition book my biggest gripe is when the competition is not actually that big of the story but I got the vibe that it wasn't going to be by the time I got there so I wasn't too disappointed but truly it was like one page and it wasn't even like they didn't even involve him like baking and making mistakes realizing all the things that she taught him it was about their love story and their dynamic I still prefer the first book I want to reread it this was a solid effort and I will continue to read from this author so that's great for the Rihanna concert to begin. I am making my way through this. I'm a third of the way in and we have another character who ordered an old fashioned and I just feel like these authors are out for my heart. Oh, Rob came home from a job and he brought me, it looked like a flower. What is it? Ah, he got me this. Was it in the Valentine section? Yeah. Do you think it's Lindor's actually attached to like a I stem? I doubt it. I don't think anyone puts that much effort. I think I just paid $3 for a box that looks pretty and then you're still gonna get chocolate out of it. Well, it's called. Yeah. Oh, the box was full. I thought there was only gonna be three and then it was gonna be cardboard. How's your game going that you're really invested in? Um, I mean, Kansas is losing, but only by a touchdown, so it's not too bad. I made the boys nachos and they watched the first And we're all gonna watch the halftime show. Interestingly, I keep reading books where the love interest name is Jamie, and I don't know if I like him. So this is kind of inspired by Much Ado About Nothing, which is a story I enjoy, retellings that I frequently enjoy. We have two characters who don't think they're gonna like each other. She's a little wild. He is really buttoned up. Are you making fun of me? She's very quirky and fun, and he is not used to that. He's a doctor. His life is very serious. He walks around with three different sets of clothes in his car at any given time to make sure he's prepared for anything. And that's important because in the first like moments of them interacting, she spills things on him and hurts him multiple times. But then their friends think that they both need a partner. And so they decide to give each, uh, they give each of them each other's phone number but not tell them who the person is. They're like, oh, I just know this perfect person for you. Just start talking to them. And then they're texting back and forth without knowing the, who the other person is. And then once they find out that the other person is the other person, they're mad at their friends being like, I can't believe you put us together. <laughs> Stop looking at me. Uh -huh. <laughs> because their friends should know better and they're not interested in each other. But of course, via their anonymous texting, they build a rapport. And now they're going to actually fake date to get revenge on their friends. I'm not sure how that is really revenge, doing exactly what their friends want, but I like the plot. I don't think I like these characters. Oh, drone coverage. It's dangerous. My friends, I think I made a mistake with this one. I'm halfway through, which is a bummer because I feel like I should DNF it, but being half, because I know it's not gonna get any more than like a three, but I'm already halfway through. So like, I can't stop. Cause there's only like 150 pages to go 
and I might as well continue so I can actually have an opinion on it. But in case you didn't watch my romance series, a realization that I made is that I'm a rom-com girl and I just love sillier, lighter, fun romance. I like fun banter, I like wacky scenarios, and so when I think of like the five books that I gave a four and a half or five stars that came from that video series, I think of, I associate them all with being that wackier vibe. But this and Seven Days in June are the two that made it to like the favorites list that are more sentimental and got like four and a half stars. And so I just went into this not with the right expectations because this is so soft. It's too soft for me. <laughs> it's nice because they're so communicative. They are really sharing all of their feelings. Um, she has autism. He has anxiety. They are opening up to each other. They're sharing their pasts with each other and how they struggled through so much. But they've gotten into a relationship rather quickly. The fun is over and it's just so sentimental. Well, I guess it's a balance between like really steamy scenes. I don't remember this one being this descriptive, but I do know that Chloe Lee writes scenes that don't make me uncomfortable. So there's that. But outside of those scenes, it's just all very gentle and I don't like it. This is just not what I'm looking for with a fake dating book. So I'm gonna finish it and I'm gonna give it a two or a three. People in the last video wanted to know what video game you were playing. What was I playing on? The computer. I only play Destiny. Oh, okay. I was fully prepared to give this a three and say the thing that I've been saying recently, which is like, I have no issues with this. The couple I can understand is good for each other. They're happy together, so whatever, but it wasn't my cup of tea. But then the third act conflict came in and it was one of the worst I have ever experienced. So I feel terrible saying this, but it gets a two. Yikeroonies. <laughs> the old deuce. And the reason I feel bad is because I feel like in other genres, if something gets a two, it was like objectively bad and like I wouldn't recommend it to people or there was a trope or something that I hated within it or like it's problematic. And something about this author is I love how inclusive she is. I love the things that she talks about. I feel like she handles so many different conversations with care. And even in the like author's note, the dear reader section, it's just so kindly and thoughtfully written. She says, if any of these are sensitive topics for you, I hope you feel comforted in knowing that only healthy, loving relationships with oneself and others are championed in this narrative. And in the world in which we live, where so many romance books are harmful and give like romanticized views on toxic relationships and the author takes no care in saying that these things are problematic and just lets them exist. Like I feel like shit for giving something like this that is thoughtful a two, but I really didn't like it. And I understand she's a cancer. She's very sensitive. Um, and some people cry during sex and that's fine. And I harbor no um, judgment on anybody, I promise. But the amount this girl was crying, I couldn't take it anymore. In the last like two chapters, it mentioned her tears 25 times and I jotted all of them down. My eyes teared up, my eyes welled up, sobbing. Um, my tears filled my eyes, tears blurred my vision. I was ugly crying, my eyes blurred with tears. I wiped my tears. She had a teary laugh. I was laughing through the tears. She, he was allergic to my tears. Uh, followed was fresh tears, tears blurred my vision. I whispered through the tears. That is a lot of crying. And two out of three of the sex scenes in here, she was crying. <laughs> like you're going through something, it can be emotional, but that's what I mean by this book is too soft for me. And that it's me and not the book. Because there's nothing wrong with her like coming to accept certain things and this love that she's experiencing is so beautiful, but I can't get fully invested in a scene like that if, if one of the people is crying. I didn't have a good time with this. So I think my romance moment is over, but I am gonna give the Talia Hibbert a try in the morning. And if the first chapter goes well, then I will continue. But I feel like I might cut this video off. The day has already started out well. I stopped at Value Village and I found two books 
This is the para or A Perilous Undertaking. Uh, it's the second book in the Veronica Speedwell series, and it's the only one that I don't have physically and had to borrow from the library, and it's hardcover. And I would just prefer to not read hardcovers from the library because of all the wrapping and the crinkling, and I hate it, but I'll do it. Um, and then I just stumbled upon this one. It was $5.99, which is fine. Valley Village now has self-checkout, so there's no more tills. It's not even like there's a couple tills and a couple self-checkout. It's all self-checkout. So my go-to checkout guy who would ring in like all my books always for like $1.99 because they didn't have stickers on them, he can't help me with that anymore. <laughs> and I have to scan them myself. So this one I also found, Greenwood by Michael Christie. I think this cover is so stunning and it takes place in like the forest of British Columbia, which is where I am. And well, this takes place in the forest. So this is what I'm gonna be reading today. I'm thinking about going for a walk, um, but it's starting to rain and I wore jeans. I don't know what I was thinking, but I can't go on a casual walk. I brought my headphones. So maybe listening to the audiobook in the woods will get me in the mood for the book. That's what I was thinking. First, I have to stop at the mall and get some Valentine's stuff for my husband and my mom from my dad. I'm gonna go to like Rocky Mountain Chocolate and right across from there is Lush. So naturally I'm gonna pick up some Valentine's Day bath bombs. Anyway, I burnt my hand this morning on my curling iron. Oh, I also have to go pick up contacts because I need new contacts. I put, uh, I was curling my hair without contacts and that's why I burnt myself. So that's how my day's going, good and bad. It's all over the place. Okay, well, I'll tell you already, um, this audiobook is not happening. This is a physical read. I don't know why Talia Hibbert always gets the worst narrators and maybe I'm alone in this and it's not talent it's just like this voice does not represent what this character should sound like in my head and same with the male character I thought it'd be fun because there was like two perspectives two narrators it's just not the right vibe um but the book opened with her entering this like competition actually let me get back in the vehicle and then I'll tell you admittedly it still might be a little bit cold to do this walk without a coat and socks on. My bad. But I got some movement in for the day. So that's all that matters. I also walked around the mall for a while. Old Navy really got me. They had a bunch of markdowns in like the just pajama kind of section. Like literally things were a dollar. And then at Rocky Mountain Chocolate, I have always wanted one of these. So I got one for Liam for Valentine's Day. It's like a hammer and you break it open and there's stuff inside. I've always tried my best to teach him that valentine's day or any other like romantic kind of love he's <laughs> not the only one worth celebrating like you should give your friends gifts you should show yourself love so they just ordered um candy grams at his school and i told him he should order one for himself and one for someone else and so every time if he wants to order more for him he needs to buy one for someone else because at this age i also think it's hard to like gift your friends things without feeling embarrassed and there's no way he's giving an actual valentine to like a crush <laughs> so i think he ended up getting four two for him two for friends and so i'm getting him a gift on valentine's day so hopefully that encourages him to like always think of his friends and think of his family and not just celebrating a relationship on Valentine's Day. Just for future, you know, whatever. Um, this is a box of fudge that I got my mom. She loves maple fudge. So I got a maple, a maple walnut, and then it was a box of four, like this was empty and you pick the ones you want. So I also threw in a red velvet and sea salt toffee, which I would like to steal. Okay, and then also I went into Sephora and I got the Fenty Fussy Heat Gloss Balm Lip Plumper thing just because I wanted it. And I saw Rihanna yesterday and she sold me on Fenty. So that's what everybody that smells so good needs to do. Go for a walk and then put on Lip Plumper. This is a definitely normal chain of events. People said it hurts and maybe I just need to feel something. In this story, we've got Celine and we learn about this enrichment program it's a nature boot camp and somebody in like the school can get a scholarship to university. Oh, it's starting to burn. I love that it opened with a glossary. As a long time Angus Thongs and Full Frontal snogging fangirl, I knew all of the phrases. Like I know what boots is and I know what Mackies is <laughs> and plaster and sixth form and slagging off. So I read that same glossary when I was like 14. <laughs> I think it's funny that everywhere calls McDonald's something different. It's like Macca's or Mackey's. In Canada, 
Well, at least in my part of Canada, we call it McDicks, and that's like a perfectly normal thing. And it was only on TikTok when somebody said it, and the comments were like, what on earth is going on? That I was like, oh, maybe to other people, that's not very normal. I'll tell you what, this hurts. I know all the TikToks are talking about the like hot chocolate shade, I think, but I wanted this one, and I, I think I like it. So that's where I put the money that I would have spent on the audiobook of this. I'm really glad I decided to go with my gut and just pick up the three minute sample because I would have been sad if I had spent money on the audiobook and then wasn't actually gonna read it. So I think what's going down in here is Celine runs this Instagram account very much into conspiracies, aliens and things, and Bradley like makes fun of her for it maybe, and they're gonna go on this camping trip together, this boot camp maybe they have to work together so i'll update you soon fantastic news halfway through i'm having a great time and i know this is a romance vlog but i am enjoying the fact that i left the least romantic one to the end because at this point they're really just academic rivals and the game the scavenger hunt that they're participating in is so much of the story that obviously they're like looking at each other a certain kind of way and they're kind of like telling other people not to go for the other person subconsciously because they want them for themselves. But so far it's just really fun and nice and I like it a lot. I can't remember if Chloe Brown was written in third person but I feel like it was if not disregard this entire statement but I think the reason this is working for me and maybe YA in general is more often written in first person than adult but I think there's something about getting their actual thoughts and their perspective that I'm enjoying more so than the other book I read from her. It felt more of like an outsider and you weren't really getting the inner thoughts as much as this type of narrative. Oh man, if Chloe Brown was written in first person, I'm gonna be embarrassed. Okay, I'm two thirds of the way through and this is gonna sound like a spoiler, but it's not. It's just something I didn't mention earlier. But at the beginning, when they first enter this competition, we find out there's actually three scholarships up for grabs. And it just makes me really curious how the book is gonna go because I would say half the time when there's a competition in a book the main character wins the competition. Half the time they lose the competition and there is a big like intent behind it obviously by the author for them to like learn a bigger lesson by losing or we fall in love with another character throughout the book and they are the better person to win. But since there's three scholarships I feel like they could both win it and also one of the side characters who we're getting to know can also win. And I'm just so curious, like I have to finish this because I really just want to know, are they both going to get it? I feel like they're not. I feel like she isn't going to get it, but there's another opportunity that's even better somehow. Also, this competition isn't all happening at one time. They're, we're going through quite a few months. Can I pause on one accurately? Sections are broken up by months, November. And so they go and participate in these things throughout like many months of school. Also, other fun thing before I finish it and give you my final review. <laughs> I like how much books are mentioned in here. Um, they've talked about the Murderbot series. They talked about Mere Christianity, books that I've read. And then he also referenced um, Black Leopard, Red Wolf. And I was reminded of the fact that I did at one time plan to do a secret TBR where I read books mentioned in other books and this would be the perfect time to do that that I don't have room in my life. <laughs> but I love that. I love books that reference books. I finished my book and I just love the fact that I one wrote off YA romance Two, didn't like Talia Hibbert, yet this is the book that I'm giving the highest rating. I can't quite give it a five. I'm gonna give it a 4.75 because of three very specific things. And if I was her developmental editor, I would add three very specific scenes and conversations in it that it would have been a five. One regarding Bradley's OCD, um, one scene between Celine and somebody that I feel like was missing. And one just like conversation regarding sexuality. So it felt a little more intentional. But at the same time, I understand that in the author's note, she is talking about the fact that she wrote Brad as a kind of inspirational character. Um, somebody who deals with his OCD far better than she 
handles hers or could see herself handling hers. And I appreciate that that wasn't the entirety of the book. It wasn't necessarily about his OCD. It felt naturally integrated into the story, um, but I, I feel like it could have, we could have had a little bit more regarding it. But for those that don't have OCD, I feel like a couple other things could have been discussed that would have helped the book go along. And also certain conversations that I wish were in here. I don't think it's necessarily reasonable that these 17 year olds need to have conclusive thoughts about their identity or be able to put everything that they're thinking and feeling into words. With that said, I'm gonna call this a five going forward. If I ever refer to this book being a favorite and being a five star, just like go along with it, it's a five. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it, especially for its actual intended audience of which I do not belong. But I also don't think it's groundbreaking. It's just a nice, story. It's predictable. It's sweet. It's fun. I laughed out loud a couple times and I just, I wasn't expecting this, but I'm so glad that it happened. So my favorites in order go highly suspicious and unfairly cute. And then love in color. I think it was Astrid Parker doesn't fail. Don't go baking my heart. And then two wrongs make a right by Chloe Lee though that one I would probably recommend more broadly than other ones. So I definitely consider this Valentine's romance vlog to be a win. And I don't plan to read romance again for a while, unless it pops up in my members TBR jar, which I guess is a possibility. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's day and I'll see you later. Bye.